Welcome back as I answer more of your questions on various different topics. So here we go. If you're enjoying this content and you haven't already liked or subscribed, please do. This question is from Felicitas Feline, who said, I'm interested in hearing what goes into a theater production behind the scenes, both before and during. I heard a podcast recently that talked about the process of revising the script after a read-through with actors and hadn't realized that takes place. Uh, well, that can happen in theater, but it sort of depends on the script. If it's an original script and the playwright is involved, then yes, revisions can happen. We frequently use read-throughs as a way of hearing the script and seeing what's working. It also happens with, um, I do that uh, with TV or film scripts I'm writing also. I'll you know, just get a bunch of friends together and to be able to hear the script and, and see how the flow is. Writing is different in theater than in film or TV because in theater, the script cannot be revised without the permission of the playwright. So the playwright has far more autonomy in theater. Uh, now, if it's a new production of a show, then the playwright can be very involved in that process and the director, producer, actors, whatever, uh, whatever the chain of command is for that production uh, might come to the playwright and say, well, we're having an issue with this, this isn't working, or the playwright sits in on that read-through, and then there's a discussion. Uh, the playwright might take his own notes, his or her own notes about what they think is working or not working, and then it might also be a conversation with others as well uh, about what they think might need to be strengthened in that. When it comes to writing for film or television, the writer writes the first draft or whatever draft it is that they turn into the company or to the producers and their contract might end right there. And then it might be over into anyone else's hands to do rewrites. So uh, I was a little surprised when I experienced that where all of a sudden it's like, oh, people are just making changes to the script and nobody has to consult with me and nobody has to even ask me to do those rewrites. So it kind of depends on what your contract is in film and television. Your contract might be for the initial script and one set of revisions and all of that is paid within your initial contract. Beyond that, they have their own people, whether it's the director, whether it's their own story editor. So they have other people that will do whatever additional other rewrites they feel they want or need and they do not have to consult you and they do not have to pay you. Uh, now, whose name is on the script on the credits? There's a whole different number of aspects involved with who gets credit. Um, the original writer will get some sort of credit no matter what happens, no matter how much it is rewritten, even if it's based on a story by or... So the percentage of script written will determine whose name is on it and how those fees are split and how royalties, what happens with royalties after that for subsequent runs. So definitely a different process. And then uh, you said, how are props and costumes sourced? That will depend on the production and how big it is. Smaller theater productions, anybody might source that. The producer might source it. The director might source some of it. You know, I have sometimes as a director sourced it. Actors will sometimes think, oh, I would love to have a blah, blah. And you know, a teddy bear in this scene. And they might have a teddy bear and bring it. Uh, so that can be fairly loose in a big Broadway production. I imagine it runs a little bit differently in that there is a designated person assigned to that sort of activity. Um, same thing with costumes uh, for theater. Often actors wear their own costumes, their own clothes, if it is not a period piece, but if it's something that requires a specific look, then there will be some sort of costume or, or person in charge of costuming. Um, and a lot of times with things that aren't period, then for me as a director, people would bring things and I go, yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, and we just go from there. Additionally, you asked uh, who decides on lighting and how is it coordinated? Uh, that is usually, in my experience, coordinated between the director and the lighting designer. They'll sit down when it's time to set lights 
and talk about what's the vision. The lighting person will typically sit in on some um, rehearsals uh, as, as things start coming together so they can see where the actors are going to be moving, where they're going to be standing on stage at different points in time. There'll be a conversation with director about the style of the show, the kind of lighting that we're looking for. And so the input goes back and forth, the suggestions are made, and just so that the whole, whole vision of the show is coordinated. Um, so that's typically how that goes. And then you said, is it boring to do the same play over and over? <laughs> Uh, sometimes it depends on the show. That's why I always love doing musicals because there was something about the energy of the music and hearing the overture and uh, and then that to me kept it livelier all the time. Um, some shows I found more tedious to do than others. Um, sometimes if I didn't have much to do in the show, then you spend a lot of time backstage waiting <laughs> until, but you have to be alert all the time to make sure you don't miss a cue. Uh, but I have never done a show for longer than, I think, 12 weeks and maybe eight shows a week. So that's a lot of shows over 12 weeks, but nothing like, uh, I've never done a national tour or anything like that. Um, I've had, been in shows that move from between maybe two theaters, but still not a really long run of a show. Um, some shows I have done more than one time. Um, and uh, yeah, there's something about the energy of a show when if the audience is very quiet and seems um, where there doesn't seem to be a lot of energy coming from the audience, then, you know, it can feel like more work as an actor in that performance to keep your own energy up and keep driving the show forward when you can sometimes feel like, well, is the audience not enjoying this? Are they bored? That's not necessarily the case. Sometimes audiences are just quiet and listening and, and, completely engaged in the show, but it isn't something that brings about verbal responses. You know, they don't laugh, they they don't they don't gasp or anything like that. And other shows you will hear those reactions and that helps the actors feel more energy. If it's a comedy and you're hearing a lot of laughs, then yeah, it's great. Um, and sometimes you feel the tension in in heavier, more dramatic shows where you sort of feel that the audience is is experiencing an emotional journey along with you. So that always helps. Thanks for your question. Another theater related question from the Butterfly Report by Jeffy, who asks, did you feel the same type of connection to the theater actors as you perhaps did in your television and film work? Yes, you tend to really bond no matter how long the show is. You might only be with people for a couple of weeks, but it really is that sense of a team coming together to make something work. And unlike film or television, where there are people in episodes that I didn't work with and I never even met because I didn't have scenes with them. Whereas with theater, no matter who the actors are, uh, how small a role they have, whether you have scenes with them or not, as well as the people behind the scenes, the, the team, you get to know everybody and you do become very close. Uh, the actors really have to rely on each other on stage because it's up to you. Nobody can say, cut, let's do it again. So if something goes wrong, it's up to the actors to find their way through it. So yes, there's definitely a bonding that goes on. And I have retained many lifelong friends all over the country from theater productions that I did. And in some cases, we weren't together that long, but we just became close. So that, that is very much the case. Um, and then you asked about, you'd like to know about the audition process. How stressful was that for you? And if you as an actress faced rejection for a particular part in a play, <laughs> yes, I have, does that affect you? Uh, or does it make you stronger or more hesitant? Auditioning and, and not getting roles is just part of the territory. Uh, I've been very disappointed in certain theater auditions that I didn't get the role. Same as with some film and television roles that I didn't get. Uh, and sometimes it comes down to the wire and you're like, oh, it's between me and one other person and the other person gets it for some reason. And yeah, that can be very disappointing. Does it make me hesitant? Not really. I think the only time that I experienced things was when I was first doing musical theater auditions. I just didn't have the 
experience or confidence yet in doing singing auditions. And I'd been through so much trying to learn to sing well enough to do shows or, you know, to, to be what I felt was ready for, <laughs> ready for public to, uh, to see. Uh, and auditions, so auditions would make me so nervous that um, it would affect my breathing. And so then it would affect my pitch. And I would be so focused on technically trying to get the song right that I think I wasn't really present. I wasn't performing. I wasn't I wasn't really coming across to the the producers, whoever was there in the audition. I think I sort of looked scared and and um, a little bland and boring because, and then probably out of tune. And so any number of those things probably impacted my early some of my early theater auditions. Although oddly, I did get I did get hired for the very first uh, professional musical that I auditioned for and perhaps because I didn't know a lot and I wasn't feeling pressure in the same way for a number of reasons I did really well and was hired and then as I continued forward then I struggled more at times uh, but there's no way to replicate that people ask me about getting over nerves and stuff I took a lot of classes I yeah you know but to to replicate the nerves or the situation involved in an audition is very difficult and anything else it was as if i knew that it wasn't the same stakes and so i just didn't have the same level of nerves but it's like anything you do it more and you get better at it and you get more comfortable so that's what happened with me and eventually i became more confident about doing those sorts of auditions and other theater auditions you know they varied in terms of what I was asked to do. I was less comfortable having to go in and do a monologue. I preferred when there was an actual script and I could actually perform from the script. Uh, so but these are all things that skills that actors have to learn in the auditioning process so again goes with the territory. That's what I have for you for this segment of behind the scenes about certain aspects of theater. I will be back and talk more in detail about theater and writing and directing and some of the other areas that you had interest in. Thanks for watching.